Right, joining us now is an author, Dayo uh, Lamuagun. Dayo, it's good to have you join us right now. It's always my pleasure. Thank Great. you. Now, the, the, the point is, I have about seven books here authored by you in front of me here. Uh, right. the, the Real Sacrifice, The, last, the, the Half Cast, The uh, Poetic Wisdom, The Camaraderie of Twenty, uh, Take Me Back to Oxford, not Take Me Back to Lagos. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the Bizarre Bazaar as, and, and then The Sane Lunatic. Some of them paradoxically uh, mm -hmm. titled really interesting. But talk mm -hmm. to us, let us start from the reading culture. We've also often heard the, uh, uh, the statement that Nigerians don't read. What do you make of that? Uh, so I think uh, if, you, if, if we look at what we, we had before now, mm. uh, people that say we have issues with our reading culture, I think uh, they, uh, they, they may be totally correct. Okay. Um, people hardly read this day. I mean, you can, you can even, tell, I mean, do, uh, as a student growing up, even as young children growing up, you, you are made to read books. So there's a number of books that you have to read every, every time, mm. every semester mm. as you grow up. In fact, whether, it doesn't matter whether you're a literature student or not, whether you're a science student or not, you got to read some number of books. But today, that culture is not even there again. And your people hardly read, even in your schools, they hardly read. And, uh, and you see, it's unfortunate uh, because the life of the society you, you cannot separate it from the kind of things they read, the kind of things they listen mm. to, the music mm. they, they, they listen to and all that. And that is basically the, 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 the challenge we have with, uh, with the society now. The problem we have in our hands yeah, emanates, I mean, from these sources. Mm. And so there is a need to, to begin to look at how do we uh, resurrect the reading culture in, in, in a society? How do we begin to encourage people to read? You, you see, the, 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 the beauty about reading is, if, I mean, you, you, if you go to the street, you even ask people a mm. uh, simple question that they're supposed to know about their, about their own history. Mm. And they're looking like dummies. So knowing <laughs> all this, oh, yes. knowing all, all this, uh, you know, mm. having them at the back of your mind, how does that inspire you in writing these books? And like Mike said, mm. you know, they all have interesting titles. So how, how do you, you know, weave all this into making your story, your stories captivating and, and relevant for our times? Yeah, I think, uh, yes, all inspiration comes from, from God. So I give God the, 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 the glory for the, for the, the, the inspiration. Uh, but then as you look at the society, uh, I am not comfortable. I mean, you see issues, issues around character, the way people behave. You see all kinds of character defect that you, you think if this is managed in some way, we'll have a better society. You see corruption in our society is, is part of the issues we have. Yeah, and so as you look at these issues around, and uh, yeah, you, you, you have the story coming and you begin to weave it together just to, to be able to address some of these issues. Now, because I felt uh, the revolution we may need ultimately may not be the violent type of revolution. It may just be the revolution of pain and the books. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's the revolution of a character. It is a revolution of, of doing the right thing. So if these things are documented in a book, in a story form that uh, people can relate to, mm. that is interesting, and they will to learn their lesson. Chances are that as they go out, they remember the story as they want to act, they, they know how to act. And so I, I think it's basically this. More like right. evolution of the books. Dial, the, the point, the, the, this conversation is going to go on because uh, I am quite interested in some of the, the, the bizarre bazaar, you know, the title like that is really interesting. <laughs> and then the same lunatic, what, what very wonderful paradox of uh, putting two <laughs> <laughs> opposing yeah. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know together mm -hmm. but i know they have deep uh, meanings and all of that but we'll come to understand all of those as we get along oh. dio thank you so much for coming it's always my thank pleasure. you thank you right. I, I appreciate it well joining us now is author dio lomuago good morning uh, and good morning. thank you for good joining morning, us dio. it's also interesting that you're here to talk about you know something rather unusual because you've, you've been a regular or, or uh, here <laughs> in tvc <laughs> news <laughs> so uh, right so um okay so maybe we can talk about um, some of these books now uh, yeah. so there's a decadence in the society and the safe lunatic is the safe the sane lunatic is is out one of your rather admirable works tell us about this and its relevance to the society all the they say nothing so the storyline is one one fantastic storyline that uh, you see we live in a society now that uh, people's care seeing the truth those days when you were growing up they tell you uh, prefer to speak the truth and die uh, but this day 
you, you, are, uh, you are expected to apply wisdom in court and not say <laughs> the truth. And that is where we are all here now, uh, battling. So uh, uh, it's, it's a storyline that I mean, it, it, where you decide to say the truth, people think you are, you are lunatic, mm. you, are, you are insane. Uh, but at the end of the day, you see, the truth may take 2,000 years to travel. It will get to the destination. You will still come and meet it. Uh, and so, however uh, lunatic those suggestions uh, seem, however weight they look like, uh, if it is the truth, you cannot do anything against the truth. Uh, and so, it, it has some very good implication for the society, for our nation. Uh, you see, it doesn't matter how you see people who stay on the side of the truth. You can even call them name and call them community, whether in the family or in the society, wherever they find themselves. You see, but if it is the truth, you will always it's meet it in front. Mm -hmm. So they may be sane, I mean, they may be lunatic, but down underneath, yeah. they are very sane people. They are, the same, they are actually the sane ones. They are the sane ones. Standing yeah. alone, and you know, <laughs> the, lone, the, the lone person is speaking the truth. Yeah. Now, talk to us basically about the, the concept and the, the love for writing. A lot of people these days don't have the love for writing. Talk to us what gives you inspiration to write in your own instance. Uh, so I think it comes to me uh, almost naturally. Okay. You see, everywhere I go, I see something uh, which may be changed, something uh, which may, uh, if we adjust a little, mm. maybe it will be better for everybody. Mm. And so once I begin to see that, I begin to feel, how do I put it into writing? Yeah. So even while I go on water, I want to write poems about the sea, the great sea. Mm. I want to write a poem about anything, you know. So uh, to the extent that it can help better the individual and help better the society. And I think the great challenge we have that we begin to have a, a debt of these uh, writings is because, uh, again, you cannot be a good writer if you are not a, you are not a good reader. Mm. So you are, first, mm. you are first a good reader first before you be a good writer. Mm. Uh, so because you need to also read what people have written, you need to look at, compare things yeah. and get there. And sometimes you can even get inspiration from, in fact, from what people in have In fact, written. when you read uh, others, uh, you, you gain the, an age-long wisdom. Mm. Maybe it's something that it takes people 700 years to get. Mm. You can just get it in seven hours, wow. in seven minutes, wow. because you have read. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and then uh, the style, your style in, in writing. Some would say they prefer writing in, in novel format, you know, uh, prose format, I should say. Some would say no, they, they rather choose poems. Some would rather do uh, the yeah, inspirational play. kind of thing or, or, or the play. Uh, which one are you most comfortable in and why does it work for you? Why does it deliver your message accurately? I think that's a big, a big question for me. Uh, incidentally, uh, maybe I'm fortunate. I think I have, <laughs> I can just blend in any of this, whether it's the prose, whether it's a poem, because I also write yeah, poems. Yeah, there's the if poetic, you look at wisdom, the poetic yeah. wisdom. Oh, it's yeah. A collection it's a of collection of wonderful. Some other poem that I got from poem, okay. the indigenous people here. Uh, uh, so, for me, what is important is uh, the audience. And uh, so, if I'm looking at uh, 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 the young people, they, you clearly need to pass a message that they understand, and relate to. Uh, that they can relate to. I mean, you don't begin to talk old school because <laughs> it will do well to them because you need to get them understand. Uh, and so even when you're trying to pass messages that you think, oh, this is like, like old school, like you give some very rich African proverb, you give some, you know, you've got to be able to, to break it down for them. Mm. You know? Sure. Yeah. And make it modern. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dio. We have to leave you here for now, but the discussion continues. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Right. All right. We have in the studio an author, Dio Lamuagun. Dio, it's nice to have you join me. It's right, my pleasure. Join us right Thank now. You. Now, you have about seven books here. Talk to us about, but these are not the only books you've written. You've written more, more than 10 yes. books or something. Yes, I've written five before. Uh -huh. Very good. Uh, in all of this that you have written so far, which amongst them is more tasking for you when it comes to putting the concept together, when it comes to, you know, putting the ideas out there? More tasking, yes, I think I would say is the Take Me Back to Oxford. Take Me Back to Oxford. Uh, where is Oxford? Oxford. Uh -huh. Very good. Yes. This is Oxford. Okay. Wh why is this so? Yeah, it is so because, so I got the storyline. I got the inspiration to write this. And the storyline, uh, so closing the storyline was a bit difficult. Then I, I need to do more work and uh, to be able to get it right. Then um, also, uh, the concept around it is, uh, is a concept of how do we uh, save the soul of the society. 
Uh, so it could be the country, it could be the community where you live. Mm. Uh, and I think it's applicable to many African countries, uh, how we can, how the young people mm. can mobilize uh, themselves and save the society. Uh, yes, if you look at the story of many African countries, especially those that were colonized by whether the British or the, or the other, or other countries, uh, you have a story where it looks, it, it looks that they were blues, I mean, uh, at the beginning when they got independence, everything looks that, oh, the future is really great mm. and it's really bright. And people used to talk about the old, the old good days. Mm. And you the good old wonder, days. The good old days. <laughs> and you wonder, uh, why don't we have them now? So at some point, the stories change, the music change, mm -hmm. and now if, if, if you look at everywhere in Africa, almost everywhere in Africa, you see they have the same feature. It's yeah. corruption, it's underdevelopment, it's this, it's that. Right. So, uh, so, you, so, so take me back to Oxford. It's more of a metaphor, a pictorial metaphor, not necessarily all of us going to Oxford. Definitely not. So <laughs> the, a, a metaphor of where we should have been, mm. Uh, or where we could have been and what we need to do to be there. Okay. That message also seems to play out in, same, in the same lunatic too, where you say, okay, it's good to have the good old values or your values, um, homegrown values, but then there are also other positive values internationally that you can also imbibe, um, you know, br imbibe mm. and be yeah, a so much as, better person. As in the video as society, we don't live in a, like an island. Absolutely. I mean, there are clearly some good stuff about your own culture. Uh, you see, it is, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is bizarre to to, to, to negotiate your own values. Mm. Uh, there are some rich African values in the area of Britain, in the area of hospitality, mm. in the area of uh, hard work, yeah, villages and all that, in the area of neighborliness. Yes. You know, it, it, is, it is insane for you to sacrifice that, that out. in a bid to be westernized. Mm. Clearly, we are not there. And if you look at the western countries, some of them are having troubles because they sacrificed their value those times. Now, if we told the same line, I mean, we'll get the same trouble today. They mm. are getting so. Mm. Expose yourself to, to, to what is happening globally, uh, but maintain you, your own standards. Yes, in fact, that, aren't we having all of those problems already? The, the issue that when we hear of uh, uh, um, suicide cases, mm. the numbers are rising. When we hear of divorce, the numbers are rising. And these are all issues that, in as much as we had them, but they were not as common as, as uh, they are right now. They were curtailed those days because exactly. of the values, the African mm. values. Right. There's something you don't do, there's something right. you... Okay, yeah. we have to leave it here now. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dio Lomuagun, for your time and thanks for putting ideas into, into writing and Absolutely. for others to We wish you the from. best oh, when, when they finally hit the market. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you.